I'm going to do another quick piece here, which is, I think I'm going to put color down first, which start my drawing. If you want to watch, you can, but this is, it's going to be a little bit different. Thinking. Similar subject, no, not similar. Identical pieces to the to the drawing. This time I'm going to actually use, I have a choice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use wet material, which is harder to get, get it to come out right. In such a limited amount of time. And I have a choice with, with, I've got watercolor. I have a couple of different little palettes that I could use here to make this go where I want it to go. I've got a little tiny one in my Altoids tin, which is just got Yellow, red, and blue, and a neutral gray brown, an ultramarine. Uh, 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 it's a burnt umber. <laughs> burnt umber together with blue. It makes a nice what gray. What are they? They're watercolors. Still watercolors. Yes. And then this is a white, uh, like a white gouache. So that's one palette I could use. These are also watercolors, a little less limited. It's a little portable one. Obviously, I made this one. This one is done with little half half uh, <laughs> yeah. little uh, half pans um, and then these are also half pans this is a commercial one done by I know exactly right. it's called <laughs> whiskey painters and I can tell you the neat story about whiskey painters it had to do with one whiskey drinking and, and painting with whiskey <laughs> up in New England or up in the northern parts of Minnesota and Michigan in the winter Watercolors freeze, and so do oils. So they would mix a little bit of whiskey into their paint so that it didn't freeze when they're outside cool. painting. And then when they would come in, they would get they would gather together and see who had the best painting. And then whoever had the best painting won the remaining whiskey. <laughs> they usually shared it, but if there was any left over, they took, they took it home. Somebody would win. So that's where it started anyway. Uh, I, these are both of my, these are both sketch kit ones. This one is my more, if I'm outside painting and I want to do a full painting, I want to be able to have a larger amount of color and have a larger mixing area. But for this, it's a small piece. I don't need all of this unless I really want to go full-fledged watercolor. But if I'm doing watercolor and ink together, I probably just need a, a, a smaller array. I don't need that. For that, I get a different batch of, again, I get different, pull out different brushes for that. So I'm already thinking that this is my basic structure right here. I've got this tabletop that goes across here. I pushed it way over to the side. I have a little bit of a shadow coming this way, but not a lot. And so I'm thinking I'm going to use, again, still limited color. And I'm even going to use my smallest little brush. Now, what does that work? What's up, what's up with that? And I haven't, oh, and by the way, I haven't wet these yet, which is silly. So I'm going to come in here, sort of clean off this one. There's a, this one's a little bit of a raw uh, yellow ochre. It's got a little bit of contamination of some other color that I didn't clean off properly. But I'm just going to come in, wet my colors really quick. A lot of times I'll just run water over them or I'll spritz them a little bit. This one's getting too dry. It's cracked. I should probably get rid of all that. I haven't been painting as much because it's over the winter. I wasn't using my little sketch kit very often. But I'll re-wet all these so that I can pick up color in a hurry. And it doesn't hurt if you've got color down and you can't tell what it is. To uh, re wet it, re wet it, and then after you wet it, 
I'll show you what I would probably do if I hadn't been painting for a while. I've been painting a lot, but I haven't been painting with this particular kit. So sometimes it's helpful to come down and just see what the colors you've got are. Mm. That's a that's kind of a a purpley red. It's very dusty, and this one's kind of a it's a yellow ochre, which when it's thin, it's kind of bright. This one is a much brighter yellow, a much greener yellow. This one's sort of orange, more of a green. And the truth is, I only need three or four of these at any given time, but it doesn't hurt to have a bit of a run of color that you can play with. So what I've, that didn't come out very good. That's, that's a much brighter purple than it looked like at first. A blue that leans purple ever so slightly. A blue that doesn't lean so purple, much more of a middle blue. A blue that leans a little green. This one's a little bit opaque. It's called cerulean. You get a heavy batch of it. You can see a little bit of greenishness to that. Mm -hmm. But it also goes opaque a little bit, as does this color and this color, and a little bit of that one. And then from there, I, I have one green. And then I have this color, which is also a green, but you won't notice it as a green but when it's full-fledged, it gets darker. It's kind of an olive brown when it gets, when it starts, to, if it gets thick, it gets opaque and it looks a little olive. It, but it, it, what it is is burnt umber. If you had raw umber, it would definitely be a, a dark olive green. So it's related to that. So that's the color, run of colors I've got. I'm not gonna use most of those. I'm gonna very quickly throw in a, I'm gonna come in with a green and a touch of that blue over from over here. You think, what is he going to do with that? Well, a little more blue. And oddly enough, watch this, I'm going to dull that by coming in with a slightly purpley brown. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be, and I should be using a much bigger brush for this, but I'm just, it's, it's, it's about being a touch, right? Not being Same color, just darker. Now that's very wet, so I can't be doing a lot of ink up there in a minute, unless I also, here's that thing when you were talking about the being, being too wet. Yes. Watch, I'm squeegeeing off my color and spreading it out. That allows it to be drier much quicker And then I can actually bring some of that possibly down into my paint, or my, into my drawing. Ah, I've got a green someplace else, don't I? You know, see that blue green of the color there? And I'm thinking that, that a blue, my blue green here. And then I'm going to actually bring it into the shadow. So it's basically what I'm doing right this minute is I'm doing a wash drawing, right? It just happens to be blue-green. Now, here's the prom part. How quickly is that stuff going to dry? <laughs> not so, not so much. But I'm going to still. Oh, I've got ink right here. Am I willing to let things bleed occasionally? Sure. So I'm going to come in here and get a little bit of the bottom of that cap and then play with the glass. That shoulder is way too uh, way too vertical. It actually comes out here. But I can use it. It's okay. Wet paper. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Is that India? Yeah. This is yeah. That's I'm back to using my my India type ink. Yeah, the Sumi ink. 
Just, it's just, and that's just the Japanese name for, now look, I'm back up. Remember up here, it was wet. What am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I doing such, why am I being so ridiculously dangerous? Because, you know, sometimes danger is a little bit fun. Be quicker, John. You don't have a lot of time here. But when you're quick, sometimes you're not intentional. You're just quick. Ooh, it's coming out much grayer. I've hit a lot of water. doing the shoulder wrong, and I'm getting the, the bulbous part of the bottom wrong, too. up some real black and hoping it doesn't maneuver around too much on its own and I'm thinking how about maybe a few more lines that sort of follow the, the bottle a little bit stronger a little more vertical a little less curve there curve coming out and then dropping into straight up close to straight some sense with this mm -hmm. not looking too terribly bad hopefully make a little bit of sense come in here and play with okay yes now at that point I want to come back in cleaning my brush out a little bit and with the idea of I want a pale little bit of a wash but I've just done some of those marks can I make can I make them in here without completely destroying the mark I made. I think I can. Sound like the little the little engine it could there. I think I can, I think I can. If I tell myself often enough, I'll, I'll keep doing it. Some dry brush gray. And then back to the pure black with a brush. No. I wanted a thinner mark. And I guarantee I, I can usually get the thinner mark as I want with pretty much any brush, but sometimes you just want really careful to be able to be careful. I'm making fat marks now, but I also want to be able to come back in and do really thin ones. No, the brush didn't have a, a, a point that was that thin. And I'm going to come in again with a little more dark here, very thin, and thicker as I move back to where it's really very dark over there, and then also right underneath here. Okay, does that make any sense, guys? Mm -hmm. now, so so I've got... that's wash first, ink yep. second. Ink, ink second, right. Now, does that mean I can't come back and go, are 
be clean enough to put back in my watercolor. Mediate between straight out of the tube and what I made here. And then come back in with a, can I, see all of this over here is actually wet. So is this. So why don't I think about I don't know if I'm doing the right thing at all. I'm not liking all those little ridges, though they did kind of line up nicely with what I was doing up here. So maybe I come back in now and come back into them and then wipe that again. And you know what? It looks good. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do at that point, exact point, I'm going to come back into the blue that I was picking up, mixing it in here again, and this time I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the purpley color, the purpley red, gray thing. Thank you, thank you, Mother Sue. <gasps> Quit <Bummer. hurt. laughs> I'm just thinking a little darker color, maybe, might be appropriate. This part of the shadow in here. Testing it out. Yeah, I think that's going to work. A hint of it here. A hint of it here. Maybe a slight hint of it with a little more of the brownie color in it. Just, just to pick up. Not so much that's going to scream at you. Are you allowed to be subtle? Yeah, I don't know about that. That's asking an awful lot of people. In the world we live in, subtle. And then tie it all together. <coughs> nice. Why do people have such a hard time with green? You always hear artists complain about green. Because the green that comes out of their box doesn't match how varied the greens are out there. Because the truth is, the colors that are out there are about 50% gray. Mm. All of them. Okay. All of them are 50% gray. They're not gray as in mechanical gray of black and white. They are the natural grays that live in the world until you get massive amounts of sun or massive amounts of shadow, mm. they're mostly gray. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and most people, look at the old, I mean, I've got green, I've got gray browns and olives, and this is what I had to make that with. Right. All this electric stuff. And you want, now I know, for, I have friends who go out and do what they call plain air painting, and they don't usually, they have half their colors are electric and half their colors are dull so that they can quickly get to a duller red, a duller blue, a duller gray, a duller, duller orange. Me, I don't, even though I paint outside all the time. I mean, I, in this box, I have one silly dull color. Mm -hmm. Caput mortem. It's an old, yeah, it, it's, in a, it's a Latin word. Mm -hmm. Look it up, caput, C-A-P-U-T, and German. mortem. <laughs> I pronounced it more German. <laughs> No, it, no, 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 it's, it is an, it's a Latin word, and it's, I know what it comes from, and I'll let you look it up, I'm not going to tell you, you'll, you'll have, you'll have fun finding it. Huh? Mortem is dead, right? Yes, yes, kaput, and kaput means dead, you know, that's finished, that's really dead. <laughs> it's finished being dead. But look it up as a color. Just put, Caput mortem, and it's, I think it's spelled with an E-M, mortem, E-M. Uh, I don't think it's a U-M, but it could be. But caput mortem. Look it up as a color. Windsor Newton. And then tell us where it originally came from. It doesn't come from what it used, where it used to come from. 
but it's a wonderful story. 